before we start chapter 7, we are going to spend two days reviewing chapter 6, and we're going to review exponent rules from chapter 6. So this is a review. When you are multiplying bases that are the same, you are going to add those exponents. So this is a raised to the m plus n. If we have one base raised to a power raised to another power, so a power to a power, you are going to multiply the exponents. When you have a group raised to a power, and inside that group is all multiplication, if there's addition, subtraction, you've got more different rules to follow, but when it's all multiplication in the inside, you are going to distribute that exponent, and you are going to multiply, so that's a to the m times b to the m. Next we have a raised to the zero power. Anything raised to the zero power is just one. We've got a to the m divided by a to the n. See here that we have the same base again. When we multiplied bases we added the exponents, so when we divide bases we are going to subtract the exponents. So we've got m minus n. When we have a fraction raised to a power, just like when you had a quantity here, you are going to distribute that in, so it's going to go to the top and the bottom. It's going to go e to everything on top and everything on the bottom. So that's a to the m over b to the m. We have a to the negative m power. When we have negative exponents, that means that we are going to take the reciprocal. So, right now we have a whole number, so if I wanted to make that into a fraction, I put it over 1. To get rid of that negative with the exponent, I move it to the other side of the fraction. So right now it's on the top of the fraction. When I move it to the bottom of the fraction, it becomes a positive m. With our last property, there are two ways that you could handle this one. First, we could use our distributive property here, and I could distribute it into both pieces. That would give me a to the negative m, b to the negative m, and then they're both negative, so I have to flip them both, so that becomes b to the positive m on top and a to the positive m on the bottom. Or, I could have gotten rid of the negative with the m in one step by taking the reciprocal of the pieces on the inside. So if I flip the b and the a there, if I flip everything on the inside, that negative becomes a positive, and then I can distribute it in. So that becomes b to the m over a to the m, which is exactly what we found going the other way. There is no right or wrong way, so you can do it whichever way makes more sense to you. All right, so let's try a couple examples. Just remember that when you are simplifying, you always want to rewrite with positive exponents. You should never have any negative exponents in your answer. To know that your answer is completely simplified, you should see your variable in only one place. So you shouldn't have an A on top and on bottom, and everything should be positive. So we look at our first one. We've got x to the fourth times x to the third. We are multiplying like bases, which means we're going to add those exponents, so we get x to the seventh power. Our next one, we have a power raised to a power, so we're going to multiply those two numbers. Two times three is not five, but six, so be careful when you should add and when you should multiply. Our next one, we have a group raised to a power, so we're going to distribute that in. And we're going to multiply the exponents. x right there, that really is an imaginary 1. So anytime that you don't see an exponential value, we know it's just a 1, so it's 1 times 3, so it's x to the third power, 2 times 3, that's y to the sixth power. For our next one, we've got x to the eighth over x to the second. We are going to subtract 8 minus 2 gives us x to the sixth power x to the negative second, well we have a negative exponent so we've got to get rid of the negative. To get rid of the negative we do the reciprocal. So right now that would be the top of the fraction. So to make it positive 2 we move it to the bottom of the fraction and we have 1 over x squared. Next one, we've got x squared, y to the negative third, z to the fourth. 
it looks like it could be simplified. I've only got an x in one spot, a y in one spot, and a z in one spot. But because I have a negative exponent, it is not completely simplified. Now this is where you have to be careful. When we have a negative exponent, that negative is only corresponding to the y. So when I move things, I'm only moving the piece that has the negative. x squared, that's a positive exponent. That's going to stay as is. The y to the negative third, that's going to move to the bottom to become a positive. z to the fourth, z to the fourth is positive, so that's going to stay. So you want to be careful that if it's negative exponent, you only move the piece that is corresponding to that negative exponent. In this case, it's only the y. Move it on. So now we have a number base. We want to be careful. When we look at the first problem we did, x to the fourth times x to the third, we multiplied the bases and added the exponents. But when we multiplied the base, it did not change. That same thing is going to be true here. We have the exact same base of three, which means we are just going to add the exponents and the base is going to stay the same. So two minus five is going to give us a negative three. But now we have a negative exponent. To get rid of that negative exponent, we have to do the reciprocal. So we move it to the bottom and it becomes a positive three. Three to the third is twenty-seventh. So that's going to be one twenty-seventh. This problem is tricky because you don't want to actually multiply the threes to give you nine. I guarantee you someone's going to tell me it's nine to the negative third. The base does not change. When you multiply like, like bases together, only the exponents change. So we move on to the next one. We have two to the fifth times two to the first. Same base, I add those exponents, giving me two to the sixth power, all over two to the fourth. I still have the same base, so I'm going to subtract since I'm dividing those bases. Six minus four gives us two squared. Well, two squared is just four. So make sure that you multiply those numbers out. You don't want to leave this as three cubed. You don't want to leave that as two squared. Okay, our next one we have m to the second over m to the tenth. We are still going to subtract because we have division. But this is the who wins rule. When you are facing a division problem, regardless of the setup, you want to look at which exponent is larger. So when I look at this one, I've got two and I've got 10. 10 is bigger. Wherever you have the bigger exponent, that is where the variable is going to stay. So then we subtract from here. 10 minus two gives us eight. So this is one over m to the eighth. On all the other division problems we've done, so like the first division problem, we had x to the eighth, x to the second. The top one, so eight minus two, gives us x to the sixth on top. So when you are dividing like bases, look to see which piece has the larger of the two exponents. That is where the variable is going to stay, and you subtract from there. Okay, next one, we have h to the negative fifth all over h. We have a negative exponent, so we're going to get rid of that, and I'm going to move it to the bottom. I already have an h down there, and I'm moving an h to the fifth. That means there's nothing left on top. It doesn't make it a zero, it makes it a one. Now I have two h's on the bottom. I am multiplying like bases, which means I'm going to be adding those exponents to give me one over h to the sixth power. All right, two more before we get into some harder problems. We have our whole quantity raised to the negative third power. Sometimes I'll distribute the negative in and then move depending on the situation. In this case, when I look inside, I have all positive exponents. So I'm not gonna distribute. If I have positive and negative, I might decide to distribute, but here it's all positive. So my first step I'm gonna take is to get rid of that negative three exponent. And we know that to get rid of the negative, we do the reciprocal. So I'm going to take that whole piece and move everything to the bottom. Because of the parentheses, that entire quantity is getting that negative exponent. If there was no parentheses, I would only be moving the piece directly to its left. Now that I have the positive exponent, I'm going to distribute it. That is not two times three again. That exponent on two would be a one. So that's two to the third multiplied two times three, a to the sixth, b to the third, 
and c to the 15th. Remember what we said a couple problems ago. We don't want to leave that as 2 to the 3rd. We want to evaluate it. So it's 1 over 8, a to the 6th, b to the 3rd, c to the 15th. All right, our next one. We have a negative 2 times x squared times x to the negative 3rd all raised to the 4th power. We want to be careful depending on where the negative is. If the negative is in the exponent, we have a reciprocal. If it's a negative coefficient, we don't move it. Negative coefficients do not follow that reciprocal rule. So we have this whole quantity we distribute it in. That's a negative 2 to the 4th power. 2 times 4 gives us x to the 8th. Negative 3 times 4 gives us y to the negative 12th. We have a negative raised to the fourth power. That's a negative raised to an even power, which means I have four negatives. If I have four negatives, that's going to become a positive. Two to the fourth power is going to give us a positive 16. X to the eighth is a positive exponent, so it stays. That negative 12 with the Y means it's going to move to the bottom of our fraction. And once you move it, you lose it. So you move that negative, you lose the negative, and it becomes positive. All right, we've got some more complicated questions here, a couple more steps. We're going to put a couple properties together to see how you do with that. So we have x to the negative second. I want to move that negative so it becomes positive. When I move it to the bottom, I already have x to the sixteenth there, which means I'm adding two more which is going to give me x to the 18th. I look at the y's. I've got y to the third and y on the bottom. I've got three y's on top and one y on the bottom. This is going to win. Three is bigger than one, which means the y is going to stay on top, and then we subtract. Three minus one is two. And then last we have our z's, z to the sixth, z to the twelfth, z to the twelfth is larger, so the z to the twelfth wins, which means z stays on the bottom. 12 minus 6 leaves us with 6. Next one, first thing, anytime you're given parentheses in a problem, you want to get rid of the parentheses first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these parentheses on the numerator. I'm going to multiply it because it's a power to a power. So I've got x to the 12th, y to the 18th, all over xy to the negative second. Now I have x's on top and bottom. To be completely simplified, I should only see x's and y's in one spot. So I look at the y's, or sorry, I look at the x's. I've got x to the 12th and x to the 1st. That means the top is going to win. We do 12 minus 1, and that gives me x to the 11th. We look at the y's. We've got y to the 18th, y to the negative 2nd. To get rid of that negative, we move it to the top. We already have 18 there. We're adding two more. So that gives us y to the 20th. So make sure you're just looking at each individual piece and make sure that you're following those rules of our exponents. Next one, we have two pieces here that we are getting multiplied. And we want to get rid of parentheses. So I'm going to distribute that 5. That's a negative 3 to the 5th power. 4 times 5, that's x to the 20th. Negative 3 times 5, that's y to the negative 15th. And that's that imaginary 1 there. 1 times 5 is 5. Now here we have the quantity negative 3 to the 5th power. That means we have 5 negatives, which is an odd number. So that is going to be a negative 243. And x to the 20th, y to the negative 15th, z to the 5th. When we look at the other quantity, it is 2 times this whole thing raised to the 0 power. If you remember back to our rules, anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. So this entire piece, in parentheses, is going to become just 1. Now the 2 is not in parentheses, so that's 2 and that entire thing there becomes 1. So we have to multiply this whole thing by 2, which means we're multiplying the coefficients together.
that gives us a negative 486 x to the 20th z to the 5th and we had this negative for our y, so we have to move that y to the bottom, so we've got y to the 15th on the bottom. All right, go ahead and press pause, and go ahead and do the last one and see how you do. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing that I did was I simplified what was inside here. Most of you probably did not do that, and you ended up with the same answer, so you see it does not matter but I see that I had an x on top and an x on the bottom. So I did 3 minus 1 to give me x squared on top, y, z cubed. Then I took care of my negative exponent. To get rid of the negative with the 2, I took the reciprocal. So everything from the top went to the bottom, and everything from the bottom went to the top. Once I got rid of that negative, I then distributed the 2. 3 times 2 give us z to the 6th on top. 2 times 2 gives us x to the 4th on the bottom and 1 times 2 gave us y to the second on the bottom. All right, that was the last problem for that section. We have two more left, and these are even harder. So we look at our first one, and we have all these pieces. And I've got parentheses, so I'm going to get rid of, concentrate on my first piece, I distribute that 3, so that's x to the third, y to the sixth, all over x to the negative fifth y. We go to our second piece, there's no parentheses on top. Second piece on the bottom, we distribute that negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, y to the negative second, and now we see we have a division sign. To get rid of division, we multiply by the reciprocal, so I've got y to the third all over x. Now, with exponents, there's lots and lots and lots of different ways that you can do this. You can move all the negatives first. You could simplify each individual piece. What I think is the easiest way to do it is to combine all of the numerators and then combine all of the denominators and create one fraction. So I've got x to the cube, x cubed times x to the negative second. So I have multiplying bases, I add those exponents. 3 plus a negative 2 gives me 1x on top. 6 plus 10 plus 3 gives us 19 on top. So that's my numerator for the top. I combine on the bottom. I've got a coefficient of a 2, that's the only coefficient I see. x to the negative fifth and x to the fourth, that gives me a negative 1 plus 1 I don't have any x's left on the bottom, that's zero, they're, they're gone. One minus two is a negative one, so I, I've got y to the negative first on the bottom. I think that this is less work, because if you simplify each piece individually, then you're gonna have to simplify them together, and then you're gonna have to simplify your answer again. So once you get rid of all of your parentheses, I just combine all the numerators together, combine all the denominators, and now we only have one more step of, simplif of simplifying. So I've got one x on top, I've got y's on top and bottom, we've got a negative exponent that has to move to the top, we have 19, we're adding one more to get y to the 20th, and that just leaves us with a 2 on the bottom. All right, this is for real the last problem this time. Go ahead and press pause and try this one on your own. Hopefully you did not spend too much time on this problem. The first thing that I see is that the exponent is zero. That means because of these parentheses that everything inside of here, no matter how crazy, how complicated, everything is just going to be one. Now because we have the negative on the outside, that does not become one. So this answer is actually a negative one. If that negative was not there, or if that negative was on the inside, your answer would become a positive one. But the negative is outside of the parentheses, so it does not get that zero exponent. All right, that is it.